Hello, it is Tuesday, July 26th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Tuesday puzzle today, so should be fairly approachable with a relatively simple theme. We'll have to see how it goes. Uh, yesterday's was certainly that. Enjoyed it. I hope you did as well. And today's hopefully also approachable edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Henrik Koskinen, Camtron, and, as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the inimitable Connor O'Neill, and the infallible Cynthia Toms. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you would like to join their ranks and receive the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve, where you can also back the campaign at any level and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the site to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And thank you to everybody who has done that at any time, at any level. I do very much appreciate it. It helps keep this whole thing sustainable for me. And I noticed that the boss words, um, summer competition puzzles, they do, it does seem like they're playable. Uh, sorry, that was a cryptic sentence to say out of nowhere. Um, a thing I've done a few times on the Patreon channel is, uh, solve these boss words competition puzzles, which are uh, difficult puzzles. They're intended to be more difficult than a New York Times Saturday, at least if you choose the more difficult versions, which I, which I have done. Um, and there was a competition held on Sunday in real time, but I was unable to participate because I was busy. So I'm going to be, I guess, doing those just over the coming weeks and posting them to the Patreon channel if you're interested in watching me solve some particularly difficult <laughs> crosswords. Um, so we'll see how those go. Anyway, uh, let's let's move on to the puzzle. I have to do subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying these videos. And now let's solve today's crossword. So this is a debut construction by Lillian Simpson. So interested to see what she has in store for us. And it was edited as always by Will Shorts. And I can already see some circled cells underneath the gauzy privacy veil. So something thematic is going on. looks like a little, I don't know, a little butte or plateau or something. Okay. Vocal range below soprano is alto, the lower of the two main women's ranges. And some time is a while, maybe? Not sure. That's a bit of a guess. So let's check the crosses. What's all around you? Okay. I think a while is correct because that looks like wool. So we have uh, a ewe is a female sheep and wool surrounds a sheep. A short-term offering from an auto shop, a loaner. If your car is being repaired, perhaps you'll use a loan car loaner. This is interesting. These two O's. Ooh. And middle parts of bodies are torsos. And like days of yore are olden. Oh, hard. <laughs> I think I see what this is. I think the, this is very clever. This is really taking advantage of the, these circled cells here. So these O's look like eggs, and I think we have two eggs over hard, which is a way to prepare fried eggs. So over hard is when you um, cook the eggs on one, you crack the eggs into a pan, cook them on one side, flip them over, and then cook on the other side until the eggs are hard. I'm pretty sure that's what that means. I do not like my eggs that way. I like a runny yolk. Uh, and, and I like the way that, uh, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but I like the way that the O's in the circle illustrations is sort of biased towards one side. So it kind of looks like the way an egg usually doesn't crack perfectly with the yolk directly in the center of the whites. It's uh, Anyway, so I suspect we'll have two eggs. Over, I bet, how much do you want to bet down here? <laughs> this is two eggs over easy. And then what would the other one be? Two eggs over medium? Is that something over medium? It probably is, actually. Let's, here, why don't I just, I'm going to not look at the clues at all. I'm going to put these in. We'll see. This is just silly on my part. I'm going to not look at the clues. I'm going to type those in, and now we'll see. We'll see if that bears up. Well, I was going to say I'll just keep solving the puzzle, but it seems a little bit silly to ignore the fact that I have now potentially a bunch of crosses in the grid. So you know what? I'm going to look at these. Thor's father is Odin, the North God, the Norse God, and what those in agreement speak with. They speak with one voice. And here we go. It looks like my suspicion was correct. French wine is vin, just simply the French word for wine. No more than that. 
and an audible response of contempt. A snort, maybe? It's audible, but not, not verbal. Spread thickly as sunscreen is to slather it on. And neither's partner is nor, neither this nor that, neither this... Oh, wait. No, this method nor this method is how I like my eggs. Sorry, I just realized I put hard in there twice. This will be easy. Good thing I was looking at that. Solidarity sort. Oh, sorry, not solidarity. Quite the opposite. Solitary. <laughs> not solidarity. Uh, a loner is someone who's, who's solitary is alone. Playground retort could be R so. It's kind of this sort of thing comes up in the crossword puzzle, maybe more than I would like, but it's an imagined childish conversation in which you're saying you are, you know, I am not, and then someone saying, oh, you are so, that sort of thing. All right, 1982 film inspired by Pong was Tron, uh, the uh, science fiction computer film. Traces left behind are residues, and winter hours in Denver are mountain standard time, I suppose, U.S. time zone. They rise during inflation, as we all know, prices do that. And the hairy cousin in the Adams family, well, as I now know, the hairy cousin is cousin it. Thank you to whoever it was who gave me the rundown on those recently. And a blustery storm could be a tempest, maybe. Certain spousal state, uh, I suppose wifehood and husbandhood, but only one of those is going to fit in the grid here. And then floating aimlessly is a drift. There we go. Sports organization for the sky and the sun. Um, if I had to guess, based on four letters with an A in the final position, I would guess the NCAA, the National Collegiate Athletics uh, Administration or whatever it is, association. Symbol of busyness. An ant? I was going to say a busy bee. But an ant is also sort of a symbol of busyness. Interesting. Never really thought about that before. Let's see if that holds up. Broke ground in a way. Mm, I don't think this is ant, and it means this isn't NCAA. So I think this is, in fact, a bee, a busy bee, and this is broke ground in a way. Is hoed, use a hoe to break up earth. And so what is this? Sports organization for the sky and the sun? I don't know. Oh, maybe the WNBA, the Women's National Basketball Association. Let's try that. Silent approval could be a nod, and a tiny amount is a wit, not one wit. Apple product that's not suitable for kids. <laughs> Hard cider, or as you'd say here in the UK, cider. Um, coin slot directive is insert, insert a coin. And Hotelier Hemsley, or Singer Lewis. So Leona Hemsley was an infamously difficult and demanding hotel heiress. I don't remember what I don't remember what hotel it was, but she was uh, legend, sort of, a, I think, a legendary fixture of New York social life and was quite uh, renowned. Anyway, Singer Lewis, Leona Lewis. I don't even think I know that name. I'm sorry. Game where rolling two fours is a square pair is craps, must be. And newspapers, books, or magazines, those are print. Well, sorry, each one of those is a print medium. And oops. As I always remind you, because it is important to keep in mind, although in this case there was no risk, um, when you have an or clue like this, we're only referring to any one of them. So newspapers or books or magazines is a print medium. And even though each of these are individually uh, pluralized, actually, they still, newspapers represents a print medium, sing singularly. Lover of the grape, maybe a wino, I guess. <laughs> Um, they love the va. Allow oneself the pleasure you indulge in solving a crossword. Not much of an indulgence, but it'll do. Bad button to click accidentally is the send button. You don't want to click that in error. And a jeweler's eyepiece is a loop, the little um, magnifying instrument that a jeweler uses. Press statement is... A release, a press release. I don't know why that took me more than one second, but there it goes. Fishing site is a pond, a fish pond, I suppose. And Leonardo da Vinci's, da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Oh, I guess it's not, not pond. What is a fishing site? 
Mona Lisa and sought consent is asked. You sought consent to, I don't know, perform a particular job or something. And ideal marks for scammers are easy targets. There we go. So fishing site. Oh, a pier. Okay, there you go. You could be sitting on the end of a pier fishing. There, that's perfectly reasonable. And credit figures are APRs, probably, annualized percentage rates. And a virtuoso is an ace, someone who's very good at something. And a Scottish Isle with a namesake terrier, the Scottish Isle of Skye. Um, and indeed, Skye Terrier, the dog. Here we have what Brits call a biscuit. Um, right, so what in the US is generally referred to as a cookie, in the, U in the UK is generally referred to as a biscuit. And illegal hunters are poachers. They hunt animals illegally. Rock, paper, scissors by another name is Rochambeau, a term I didn't know until I think well into my adulthood. State repeatedly. To state something repeatedly is to iterate it, to keep stating it. Other meanings of iterate as well, but that one works here. And if something is more eye-rolling, maybe it's cheesier, it's cornier, cheesier. I wonder why those two were food terms have essentially the same meaning. To leaf through something is to rifle through it. It does it's too many, not enough letters, rather. To, well, what about this? NBA official is a ref, a referee. Oh, okay. Um, does it have two Fs for some reason? What, what is this? Don't know. We'll come back to it. Slumber party attire informally could be PJs, pajamas. And equilibrium could be stasis. Sounding like keys or loose change in your pocket, either one of those things could be jangly. If you're expecting a baby in slang, well, it would be slang for pregnant, so preg, preggy? Ugh. Don't like that. It's just one of those words that doesn't sound good to say. But it doesn't seem like it's the answer, though, because this would have two Ys. Santa's bag full is toys. Oh, prego. Not as bad as some of the other contractions of that word. Uncute fruit, but not great. Uncute, <laughs> uncute fruit is ugly. Sorry, I don't know why I have opinions about the way that certain syllables sound. Uh, anyway, the ugly fruit, an uncute fruit. Acute cluing for uncute fruit. Language related to Inupiaq and Yupik. Inuit looks like it very much would be the answer there. Oops, maybe not. Oh, I guess it's not. Because that would make ugly wrong. So interesting. So this looks like carrot, gold standard. Oh, alu, aleut, aleut, A-L-E-U-T. There we go. That looks right to me. That looks more correct. And here we have the capital of Montana is Helena, Montana. Um, it could be a tricky one. It's not necessarily the most high profile U.S. city, but if you had enough crosses, you might be able to just infer that. Leader of something is the head of it. And, oh, here we go. Here's our revealer. So the breakfast item ordered visually, breakfast order visually suggested three times in this puzzle's grid. Fried eggs, indeed, as expected. We have our eggs over hard, eggs over medium, and eggs over easy. In ascending order of how likely I would be to order them. And I've had it. And here we have a beam of sunshine, a ray of sunshine. And it can harden into igneous rock as lava from a volcano. And examined is eyed. You saw something, you examined it, you eyed it. Oh, so here we go. So right to rifle through something is, I suppose, spelled with two Fs. I did not remember that being the case, I suppose. So that was entirely my mistake. And there we have it. Let's keep going. Baseball family name and then Eureka. Eureka is, aha, I found it. And helpful theorem in math is a, is a lemma. It's one of those terms I sort of vaguely remember from what... <laughs> Last time I had to study anything about math, which was too long ago to bear consideration. But I do remember the term lemma. A planet's path is an orbit. And Maine to Florida route is... Oh, this will be the name, right? This will be the name of it. So U US1, presumably. And <laughs> someone explained to me in a comment the other day how the US interstate numbering system works. Although this says US1, not I1. I don't remember the difference. Anyway, 
uh, essentially how the high and low numbers and the even and odd numbers correspond to the uh, directionality of the, the root and also where it's located. But anyway, I don't remember which is which, so I'm not going to try and remember. We have the baseball family name is Alu, which I think I've encountered before. US1 and then 60 seconds is a minute abbreviated to min. And there's the puzzle. What a, what an incredibly fun theme. <laughs> So this you could describe as a rebus in the non-New York Times crossword software sense. So a rebus being a physical, sort of a visual representation of a word in a grid. So we're using these O's to represent eggs. And actually, I suppose there are two ways you could interpret these illustrations. I was saying the O's, yeah, so it's a sort of interesting, actually. I hadn't fully appreciated this at the time, but the O's represent images of eggs from above, whereas the full description, the full name of the egg, the full sort of rebus, the the eggs over hard, that looks like eggs from profile. So the 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 doneness underneath hard is the is the sort of disc of egg white, and then above it we have the little mound. Of yolk, so we have, we've essentially <laughs> pictured our eggs twice each, and so we have we have in a way six total illustrations of eggs. Well, I guess more than that if you consider each of these separately, each of the one eggs. But anyway, we have we have six illustrations of two eggs, I suppose. No, I guess not, because the total rebus looks like a single egg. Anyway, sorry, this is getting much too much, much, much too in-depth. But it, my point is just that it's a very cleverly constructed grid and the representation of the eggs is extremely thorough. So well done to Lillian Simpson on her New York Times crossword debut. I really enjoyed that. And uh, it was one of those themes that uh, you you don't, yeah, you don't need to understand it because each of these is clued individually as a normal clue. Um, but because of the circled cells, I was put on to I suspected something about it very early on. And then as soon as we got one of them, it felt pretty inevitable. And it turned out to be. So there we have it. A very a very nice, fun theme from a debut constructor. Really enjoyed that. Hope you did as well. And actually, I think that's it because I was looking at the comments on yesterday's puzzle and I didn't, there were a few comments, but I didn't see anything that needed correction. Um, I suppose it was a relatively straightforward puzzle yesterday, given it was Monday. So I suppose that's it for today's puzzle and today's video. Thank you so much for joining me. Please do subscribe to the channel and like these videos if you do like them. I mean, you're perfectly welcome to like them if you <laughs> if you don't like them, uh, if you see what I mean. But either way, it's very much appreciated. And I hope you'll join me tomorrow for the Wednesday puzzle. Maybe a bit of a step up in difficulty. These were both, I think, relatively approachable early week puzzles, as, as one would hope. Uh, for which one would hope. And so do come back tomorrow for Wednesday's puzzle. And until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care.